There's a new Reason poll out. For those of you who don't know, uh, Reason Magazine is a libertarian publication. And I love the question they asked in the poll because it, it really buttressed a point that I've been making for a while on the show. They looked into who would support a socially liberal and fiscally conservative candidate. So for those of you who don't know and you're uh, not familiar with uh, political definitions, that's basically what the definition of a libertarian is. Penn Jillette loves to describe it. He is a libertarian. He loves to describe it as as far left you can go on social issues, as far right as you could go on money. So what were the results? Well, obviously, uh, when it comes to libertarians, 80% of libertarians say they will support uh, socially conservative and I'm sorry, socially liberal and fiscally conservative candidate, uh, which of course begs the question, why the fuck do the other 20% describe themselves as libertarian? <laughs> Apparently some libertarians don't know what libertarianism is. Uh, and then coming in number two, is going to be surprising to some people, but I've been calling this for a while, liberals. Liberals would uh, support a libertarian candidate faster than a conservative would. So the numbers are 60% of liberals say they uh, could support a socially liberal and fiscally conservative candidate. Uh, moderates, 58% of moderates say they can as well. 54% of progressives say they can as well. Uh, again, liberal and progressive are basically the same thing. Uh, so the numbers are, it's weird that there's even that slight discrepancy there, but nonetheless there is. And then uh, conservatives were dead last in the poll. Only 43% of conservatives say they could uh, support a socially liberal and fiscally conservative candidate. So, this, uh, this brings up the exact point that I made not that long ago, which is, why can't we all just get along? Now, I know it sounds cheesy, I know it's corny, but seriously, if you look at uh, Congress, you will see whenever there is any bipartisan uh, reform, or legislation, it is always from the libertarian wing of the Republican Party, so like Rand Paul or Justin Amash, right? And they team up with uh, somebody in the Progressive Caucus, whether it's Alan Grayson or Bernie Sanders or somebody like that. So the actual bipartisanship is from the libertarian side and the progressive side. That's the only bipartisanship there is, <laughs> okay? And whether it's, you know, uh, Ron Paul teamed up with somebody in the past, a progressive in the past, I forget exactly who it was, but somebody will uh, mention um, who's listening to the show. They teamed up uh, on changing drug laws. I mean, that's fantastic. They're both in favor of, you know, decriminalizing drugs. I know Ron, Ron Paul's with me. He'd like to legalize all drugs. Uh, we agree on the NSA and protecting the Fourth Amendment. We agree on Guantanamo Bay. We agree on ending... Uh, American militarism and imperialism and ending the wars and, uh, you know, bringing back the 900 military bases and uh, stop ending wasting money overseas in such a ridiculous and brazen way. And there's so many ways I could add to these findings. I mean, another example is we know that the Republican Party and the conservative media fucked over Ron Paul in the last election. I mean, they paid zero mind to him. Even when he was leading in some polls, they didn't mention him. And even when he came in second in some caucuses and primaries, they were like, shh. They talked more about the people who would come in third or fourth than Ron Paul, who was in second. Because they nonchalantly brushed him off. Oh, not a serious candidate. And why did they do that? That's the important question. Because the establishment is scared of him, okay? They want to continue the military-industrial complex. He doesn't. He's principled in that respect. And there's a lot of other issues, too. Ron Paul's consistent. He doesn't believe in, in welfare, which I disagree with him on, but he, uh, he also doesn't believe in corporate welfare. All the other Republicans don't believe in regular welfare, but they do believe in corporate welfare, and they're massive hypocrites. At least he's consistent. Okay, and then also, I mean, we agree on like 40% of stuff, man. And I was imploring, who was it? I mean, I went through the... Uh, the YouTube videos of Tom Hartman and Sam Cedar, and I love those guys to death, don't get me wrong, we agree on a lot of stuff, right, but virtually 100% of the coverage they they both did on Libertarians was all negative. Like, ah, look at this idiot saying this stupid thing. Now look, I'm not saying you can't do negative coverage of Libertarians, I do it all the time, right? 
but why not do coverage that reflects the reality? So in other words, why not do coverage where 60% of the time you say, haha, look at this idiot, he's wrong on this, 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 and this, right? But then 40% of the time when you fucking agree with them, give them credit, especially when they stand up for those beliefs and those values in the House of Representatives and the Senate and elsewhere. You know, I've, I always said that, look, libertarians are not just equal to Democrats on issues like drugs and foreign policy. They're superior. They're better. They're actual non-interventionists. They actually want to decriminalize or legalize, right? The Democrats sometimes just pay lip service and they tiptoe around it and then they don't even necessarily really vote for it when it comes down to it. But look, this is a plea that I'm making for uh, libertarians too. I'm not just chastising my side here and saying at least give them a little bit of credit. No, look, for libertarians, man, you need to realize that there's a reason why more liberals are open to voting for a libertarian than conservatives. You ready for this? I hope you're sitting. Conservatives are fucking idiots. Yeah, have you not figured this out yet? I love how you guys vote for conservatives and you don't realize that they agree more with Todd Akin and Rick Santorum and Mike Huckabee and, and Wall Street than anybody on the left does. They don't agree with you. They don't like you. They hate you. They think you're silly for actually believing in freedom. Okay, we don't. We're a bigger tent. And even, here's the final thing I'll say, man. So, the, the narrative goes, and this is by and large true, that, hey, uh, libertarians and liberals agree on social issues, but not on economic issues. And again, that's largely true. However, even on some economic issues, you would agree more with us than with the Republicans. So, for you to vote for Republicans, it makes no sense. So, where's my evidence for this? Well, look at the history of the debt and the deficit in the United States. You guys love to, you know, talk about be deficit hawks and be debt hawks, right? Well, it was Bill Clinton who got rid of the deficit and left us a surplus, okay? It was George W. Bush that doubled the national debt. He left us $11 trillion in debt. When it came to the deficit, he left Obama a $1.4 trillion deficit. And then Obama turned that into a, a, only a $600 billion deficit. So he cut it in half. So the idea, the, the fact that you guys haven't stopped to look at the history of the debt and the deficit and you didn't go, oh, would you look at that? The Democrats are actually better on this issue. You guys care about private sector job creation too, right? Well, uh, the Democrats historically have created more private sector jobs post-World War II. That's a fact. George W. Bush lost 646,000 private sector jobs. There's another economic reason, you know, why you should uh, vote more for Democrats than for Republicans. And the list goes on and on, man. I can give you more examples. The idea they, uh, you know, people on the right always think, well, the Democrats are never in favor of tax cuts. That's why we disagree with them. And libertarians believe that too. But that's not true. That's not true, okay? It was President Obama who made 95% of the Bush tax cuts permanent, permanent. That's something Bush couldn't even get done. Now, why is that something that's good? And why is that something that, you know, libertarians sh should applaud? Because those are the actual tax cuts for the middle class and the poor people. See, that's the thing. Democrats and progressives, I know me personally, I've never seen a tax cut for the middle class or the poor that I didn't like. So we even agree on taxes to a certain extent. The only part we disagree on taxes is when it comes to, you know, the rich and how much they should pay. But when you look at the history of the Democratic Party, especially in presidential elections, don't take my word for it, CNN Money did an analysis, even when it was uh, John McCain and um, President Obama, or candidate Obama at the time in 2007, 2008, they did an analysis, Obama's tax plan cut more taxes than McCain's did. He raised taxes, McCain raised taxes on uh, the middle class and the poor, Obama cut it. So even if you believe in cutting taxes, again, the Democrats cut more taxes than the Republicans do. So it's, you got to stop being silly. The fact that you, you still more, most of you more vote Republican and lean Republican, that just doesn't align with what your actual beliefs are. And I know you're smarter than regular Republicans are. So we should be getting together on a lot more issues than we currently do.